In this video, I'm going to be talking about why I don't wear my Rolex Submariner every single day anymore. So let's get right into it. The first reason is Rolex has become basically a luxury brand that's almost unattainable. And that's because of the waiting lists. Um, you know, if something should happen to this watch, it's not that easy anymore to just make an insurance claim and replace it. Um, because of the waiting lists, um, whether they're real or not, um, it's really difficult to come by a Submariner nowadays. Now, I know a lot of you think that everyone has one, uh, especially in Manhattan, anybody who works in banking or finance, but uh, I think as the years go on, you'll see less and less of them. Uh, simply because of the Rolex uh, marketing scheme, I suppose. Um, and so a Rolex is no longer really a tool watch. And uh, a lot of you will say, just wear it every day. Um, nothing will happen to it. But let's be honest, it's become a luxury brand that's really difficult to obtain. And for that reason, uh, it's almost become like a, a luxury piece and a collector's item, if you will. Uh, and wearing it every single day, it just doesn't sit that well with me anymore. Um, you know, so uh, that's the first reason is it's, it's just not an everyday watch anymore um, because of, of, the, of the hype and the marketing that Rolex has created. Um, the second reason is uh, I just don't want to attract that much attention to myself now that they become even more collectible. Um, especially in my uh, professional career, um, you know, there's something to be said about um, people always sizing you up when you're wearing a Rolex. Now, for you guys watching this, you know it's just a Submariner, it's just a stainless steel watch. But for a lot of people that don't know much about them, uh, it's a Rolex. It's, it's the upper echelon of watches. And let's be honest, it's just a Submariner. It's not a Patek, it's not a Skydweller, it's not a Daytona. Uh, but it's a Rolex and for someone who's not into watches or knows the market like you guys do um, It's a really expensive item an obnoxious item for something that tells time. So uh, I prefer to keep my my uh, professional life private um, I don't want to be known for having a Rolex at work I uh, do work with superiors and you just never know what they're gonna think of you uh, and you know a lot of you will say just wear it who cares what anyone thinks you've earned it it's yours but um, I think that's just the way we're wired is you're always sort of sizing each other up um, especially at work someone you know I've been in, in meetings where we're sitting down waiting for the meeting to start and people say that's a nice watch what kind of watch is that and the whole room goes silent waiting for an answer so uh, you've got an answer to that somehow and I've walked around it and I've been honest around it and it the best policy is to just say it's a European watch or it's a Swiss watch and leave it at that and that's what I've uh, noticed works the best. Another story that struck um, a chord with me was uh, our good friend Archie's uh, channel he mentioned a fan of his uh, was actually fired for wearing a Rolex um, because he worked in the public sector and he felt that the bosses and the managers didn't renew his contract because they thought he had too much money perhaps or because he was obnoxious um, for wearing a Rolex. Now, no one knows if that's true or not, but, but again, there is something to be said about the perception of wearing a Rolex, especially around people that um, don't understand the brand, I suppose. Uh, you know, I, I work sort of, I guess, in a public uh, sector environment and we have clients um, and we manage people's money. Uh, and so, you know, you sometimes you don't want to be caught wearing um, things nicer than than the people's money you're managing um, you know I know we had a, we had a, a situation at our work where um, we would rent BMW like the company would would rent cars and we would visit clients uh, and sometimes they were nice cars and we were actually parking them at different parking lots because we didn't want to be seen uh, a driving you know like a luxury car when we we're going to see um, you know, clients who, who were trusting us with their funds. Uh, and so eventually we just started renting like really basic vehicles because, uh, you know, some people had complained or had, had, had wondered or spoke to the board and, on why we're wasting uh, these people's monies on, on luxury items, uh, like, like renting more luxury cars uh, when we can just rent basic ones. So, um, 
you know, that world is very much alive, um, judging people uh, by its cover. So um, that that story kind of struck a chord with me. Uh, um, you know, I don't really care what people think about me, but I just would prefer be, to be more conservative uh, than flashy. So that's the second reason I don't wear a Rolex every day uh, to work, especially. Now, the third reason is I, um, I have a pretty active lifestyle. Um, so I bike to work every single day and it would be a shame if I just took a tumble, which I have before uh, riding my bike downtown. Um, it's very sketchy, especially with the train tracks that uh, run across the road. Uh, you can very easily get caught in them and take a tumble and I'll show you what it looks like when you take a tumble and break your watch. I've seen pictures online of it. Um, now, it's not, um, you know, the end of the world, I suppose, or um, the percentage of that happening is quite low. Uh, but if I can wear other watches, um, I probably will, especially that I'm biking every single day. You know, the, uh, the risk goes up significantly uh, when I'm riding my bike in the rain um, with all the traffic uh, and so on. And so the best part about not wearing your Rolex is Paul, Paul Thorpe mentioned it is uh, a lot of collectors or enthusiasts they catch the watch bug um, because they just get tired of you know their grail piece and then they're always on the lookout for the next high the next piece and the beauty about wearing this watch a couple times a week on weekends sometimes on Fridays uh, is you always fall back in love with it and I never really got sick of it uh, but you do feel like it's a sense of occasion when you wear it um, less than every day, yeah, if you will. And so that's really great. I, I really don't feel like I need another watch, although I do want one. Um, I'm content. And uh, that's the beauty of not wearing a watch every day is you, you resist the urge to, to start buying other stuff, other junk especially. I mean, what more do you need? You have a Submariner. Um, and also you preserve its minty condition. So that's always nice. Um, Paul Thorpe, if you guys don't know, uh, an ex-watch dealer from England, um, check out his channel. He has some really good advice uh, and speaks um, a lot about Rolex. Uh, and, and you know, I guess the fourth reason, if you had to bring one, is kind of ties into the first one, is it's become such a difficult brand to acquire because of the waiting list or because of the price um, that you just don't want to be caught with it in the wrong situation. You know. Paul talks about being mugged several times, and the last thing you want is is to be um, to be mugged, I suppose, right? Um, even though you might have insurance, it's not as easy to just replace it. And I would hate to replace this watch because it feels like you know this is my watch. I've had it since day one. I've had all the scratches on it come from me. I know its identity. I know its profile. I know it's all its um, you know characteristics, and so. Replacing it just wouldn't give me the same buzz. So That's the reason I don't watch wear this watch every single day anymore. I really wanted to I really thought I would um, but now I just sort of uh, Wear it every few times every couple times a week um, And I still love it and that's why I don't wear it every single day